500 just a mere two weeks away uh we thought there's no better way to celebrate the 25th anniversary of the event than to have motorsport legend uh whether he likes to hear it or not he is a legend mr <laughs> greg rust rusty how are you mate thanks for joining us Dan- daniel alex thank you very much for having me on i am absolutely uh not worthy of that introduction <laughs> and unlike you two unlike you two i have way more gray hairs which points to the fact that i can remember the very first Adelaide 500 and how brutal that was for the drivers, the likes of uh, Rick Kelly and Paul Radisic more or less falling out of the cars at uh, at the end of it because it was just such a gruelling thing. But mega to be back on uh, a good chunk of the Grand Prix circuit there, which is so well loved by the people of Adelaide and, and the, the South Australians generally are, are still hugely proud of that chapter. So to think they've been able to capture a bit of that magic recreate it into a supercars thing which has music supercross speedway and more is just awesome in my opinion oh absolutely we we actually called it um the festival obviously we've got the motorsport festival of adelaide which happens in march but this has really become a spectacle of motorsport it has um and and a pinnacle thing right we're a little bit lucky as we sit here and talk that it's also going to define or or, uh, be the final piece of the puzzle in in who wins the the 2024 supercars championship Um, but in addition to that just an unbelievable array of of support activity on track and the fact that they are having a crack at some sprint car racing on a temporary venue that i think is currently under construction which is which is huge supercross is always good there and what's the um it's cold chisel and and uh, and some other great acts that that sort of uh, crowded house I think as well that wrap up the music on Sunday. So I mean, it literally, as you say, festival's a great word for it. And you're within yeah. a stone's throw of the uh, of the city, so you know, good meals and entertainment are just literally around around the corner, aren't they? Oh, it's going to be unreal. Yeah, it, it shuts down the whole city, and it's the greatest event like that I can think of. And like you said, we we try to capture what we had for the Grand Prix. We're a bit too young. We weren't uh, able to get to the Grand Prix, but. Having something very similar to that is, uh, yeah, as an SA uh, uh, residents, you know, we absolutely love it and we can't wait for the for the event. They were very, um, understandably, when it when it left and went to Melbourne, they were gutted to lose that event. Everyone talks about it so fondly from some of the, I, I have a good buddy, Matt Nolte, a younger commentator who I work with regularly, and he can vividly recall the sound of those awesome cars, you know, V10s, V12s and so on around the, the track there in Adelaide and and what it was like, what it did for the city and the fact that it, a little bit like we're enjoying with supercars, um, it, you know, a season ending thing. So everyone's ready to kind of let their hair down at the end of it, you know, after the, you know, such a huge season. So I think it's great what supercars have, have done. They're off the back of a couple of terrific events too. I mean, um, the Boost Mobile Gold Coast 500 was huge. They hit that out of the park. Uh, Topor in New Zealand earlier this year was was massive for the sport and, and just a great reminder on the New Zealand side of the ditch that, um, you know, there's huge passion for, for supercars still. And I, I note that my uh, my colleague, Greg Murphy, is going over to be a quote-unquote fan ambassador for the event, which yeah. will be um, a bit of fun. And and Bathurst was was mega, obviously, for Brody and for, for Todd Hazelwood in, in recent times. So, yeah, we're, we're kind of, you know, I think going to end up with three um, really different but really good events to wrap up the season. And it's nice for you guys to be, you know, there for what will be the the crowning of the 2024 champion. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. But not only that, because obviously the Dunlop series, after Kai Allen's uh, horrible Bathurst weekend, he's now third in the championship, 42-odd points behind. So the, the, it's going to be very close there. But also Todd's coming back to race in Adelaide in the Trans Am as a Bathurst winner, which is really awesome with TFH Racing. Um, but, uh, it's, it's going to be epic for sure. Absolutely. It's going to be awesome. I, I love, I love that Trans Am series. You boys know that I have a bit to do with it around the, the speed series and, um, Todd's come in this year. I mean, they're a little bit of a, uh, a bit of an old school kind of unique beast, a little bit, um, NASCAR ish, if you like in their, in their DNA. And he, he's just shown how diversely talented he is to think that he could step behind the wheel of that thing and, and be, um, you know, up the front 
um, winning some races and adding another team name to the the mix there. They're, they're a great class of racing, and it's super cool that they're on the um, on the offering there in Adelaide too. Absolutely. Yeah, actually, I'm very glad you mentioned NASCAR S because we'd love your opinion <laughs> on the finals uh, system that they're going to roll out next year for supercars and how it's somewhat of a NASCAR structure. What do you think about the whole finals procedure and how, like you said, the event's going to end in Adelaide and it's going to be even better next year with the final four? I'm, I'm a fan of it, um, Alex. And the reason I say that is... Uh, in this business, if you stand still, if you just keep doing the same thing over and over, um, you're not progressing, right? Whether they get it right or wrong doesn't matter. They're having a shot at it. And even if it requires some tuning next year to get that formula right, because obviously we're not NASCAR. We don't have the same amount of races as them. We still have a good chunk of races. But the fact that we're dividing it up into kind of sprint, endurance, and and then overall, and that you've got a um, that sort of uh, finals flavor that you talked about um, coming into it. I think they're to be applauded for having a, a go at that. They announced that at Bathurst, obviously. That's a massive change um, for the sport. When fans try and apply that formula to championships of the past, you know, I think I think one um, comment I saw somewhere was, uh, would Scotty McLaughlin have won the, the 2019 championship if we applied that formula? And he responded really well on socials around that because the, the reality is athletes in any code play to the given set of regulations of the time, of the era, of the day. So you can't, you can't really reverse engineer and compare like that, right? Because he probably would tackle, if he was here, the 2025 season maybe differently to what he would have done in 2019 because they're different regulations. So I love the yeah. fact that we're going to have um, something that makes the endurance aspect stand apart again. That's good. Uh, yes, there'll be people that might have to, um, you know, play a longer game. And, you know, does that mean they would risk uh, winning a Bathurst because they've got to look at the ultimate prize of a championship? Well, so, so be it, you know. But uh, as I say, I think they're to be applauded for having a go um, even if it does need a bit of tuning. I just hope that people don't, you know, throw stones come next September and go, oh, you know, they, they've screwed it up. No, no, they haven't. They've, they've had a go. Um, you know, invariably when the Gen 3 car came in, there was tweaking and tuning to that, just as there's been mm. with previous iterations of car. Um, a, as I say, I'm not a believer in, in sitting still. Um, they're changing it up and, and good on them for doing it. Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree. Um, but we've been, we've been pretty big fans of the NASCAR playoff system, yeah. so we can't really can't wait for it to uh, come down under. How how epic, Alex is Alex? Is it going to be for the, the you know what we're now confronted with in yeah. that in that sport? So yes, I, I know. Um, as I said before, they're they're a bit different to what we have in terms of the total offering, so to speak, right? And what impact that has. But I mean, look at the interest that that has garnered in the past twenty four to forty eight hours before we're recording and and, and chatting here. Um, you know, someone uh, in one minute and then bumped out the next. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's, it's just <laughs> to me, I, I think there's no losses, right? They got to have a they got to have a crack at it. Well, what I like about it is everything goes to zero um, for yes. the finals. So all it you have to win it. If you don't finish ahead of the other guy, you're not going to win it. And I love it. It's but, down to the wire. And, and Daniel, the, I mean, the lead into that, of course, is that you got to buy a ticket to that, don't you? You've, you've got to you've yes. got to be in that group. So what you do in the lead up to that reset is still massively important. I, I don't think you can look at it and go, oh, well, it's all that work's undone now. I know some people will will uh, feel like that, right? Because you're, you're resetting it to zero. But I, as I say, you, you're, you're playing to the designated set of rules at the time. You're buying a ticket to that, um, you know, that awesome spectacle of being in the, in the finals, if you like. And, and that's, I think that's great. Absolutely. Um, but uh, let's quickly have a quick look at this year. Uh, I just sure. want a quick question. Your thoughts on, could we maybe see another rookie win uh, like we've seen with Brock Feeney and Matt Payne scoring their maiden wins at the at the 500? Do you reckon Ryan Wood can do it? Because obviously he's a fast up-and-coming Kiwi. He was really impressive at Gold Coast. Uh, what's your thoughts? He's uh, a guy that I've had a little bit to do with over time. I, I can vividly remember him contacting me when he was uh, fresh out of kind of Toyota 86 competition. He'd been brilliant in carts in New Zealand, and he was just about to step in 
to um, some Porsche competition on the South Island, sort of one hour endurance races. And he asked me, I happened to be in um, Wellington at the time with family and he, and he sought some media advice, right? And he is a little bit of a, let, let's call it not a fully polished diamond yet, right? I mean, I, I love the character that we see in him and, and thank goodness that hasn't changed. That's still the same kid I met a couple of years ago. Uh, he has this, a uh, really cool gift of raw speed. A lot of that stuff is being honed, and he's in a great place for that honing process with um, with Walkinshaw and Andretti United. He seems to, in those almost um, more daunting environments, a street circuit, brutally unforgiving, right? He, he seems to show another level of, of fearlessness. And so, yeah, it, I mean, that's not, you know, outside the realms of possibility that someone like him might shine and he has nothing to lose here he, he just wants to end the year on a high before he ventures into 2025 with a good you know kind of ticket under his belt to help that building building process next year he doesn't have to worry about what brock feeney and will brown or any of those guys are, are doing so we've seen walkinshaw have some success there in the past as you boys know i think what was it final commodore victory yeah, and yep. um, stuff like that you know so um that's that's absolutely possible um I love what supercars has thrown up this year. I mean, I mean, yes, there have been moments where Bathurst wasn't exactly uh, nail biting the entire time, but I'm a believer in sitting back and, and looking at that more broadly. So to think that they went 130 odd laps without a, a safety car, I mean, that is just intense, right? Mm. Gr yeah. gr grueling. And you have to stop and appreciate what is required in that from teams, drivers, you name it, to be able to just juke it out like that. And then for Brody in that final stop to realise, hey, I need a little bit of this just, just to keep ahead of Brock. And, I mean, they were they were trading tents. It was unbelievable. Yes, it wasn't wheel-to-wheel, -wheel, which we would all love in terms of a pure spectacle, but the athleticism in it, I think, is is to be admired. So, yep, I, I think there's a few. Brock sounds like um, he is going to fight to the the. It's, it's within his own stable, obviously. It's his own teammate. He'll do the right thing, but I think he's going to fight to the death on, on that deal. But yes, there are other people um, that that don't have to worry about the championship that could prove a point. And and to think that Woody might end up on that podium, that's something I hadn't paused, Daniel, to um, to contemplate. And I would love to see that. I reckon that'd be a really nice additional story in the in the twenty twenty four championship. It'd be very special indeed. Absolutely, um, he's definitely going to be an up and comer for sure. Um, I reckon. Depends on how the Toyota goes. I reckon they'll go very well, hopefully. Fingers crossed. I am a super fan. Um, he will definitely be up there, be the one to beat for sure. But um, on LTM, we're doing a, because it's, you know, to celebrate the 25th anniversary, we've been doing the best moments of the Adelaide 500. Yep. Uh, yep. Yesterday, we did the 2001 crash with Craig Lowndes and uh, Mark Scaife. Uh, nice. that, that was uh, <laughs> very entertaining. That was mine. That, that was, was yours. Mine. Yeah, yeah. That was yours. Shout <laughs> yep. out to you. Um out of your uh, the years, what was your what's probably your best moment from the five hundred? I have very vivid memories, as we said at the top of the chat here today, of the of the first one for different reasons. Um, I just thought that they hit it out of the park with what they created as an event. In terms of things that have that have happened along the way, I mean, some of the last to first stories, which I'm sure you boys have have covered or or talked about, that's remarkable in any sport or motor racing championship to think that someone, I mean, what did Max Verstappen the other night came through from 17th to win the race? I mean, it's just, it's such a rare thing, right? So, um, you know, to be on the, on the grid, I mean, Greg Murphy's going there, as I said before, to, to be a fan ambassador. I can remember talk, talking with him on the grid. Um, been lots of crazy things along the way too. I mean, even the reaction from fans to the stadium trucks and, and what they bought to the, the offering as well so there's many memories that i that i've had very few that i've missed along the way each iteration seems to pop up something doesn't it which makes yeah. it sort of sets it apart from the others but some of the last to first stuff is probably what comes to the top of my mind and the you know the performances collectively from driver team ad admittedly over the the length of that race to to do it is uh, is very very impressive um yeah i i i Spoiler alert for people watching our top 10. Craig, the 1999 race is probably num my number one, just for what Craig Lowndes did. Um, there you go. Yep. Because 
obviously it was a, a one big race split into two. Um, yep. Craig, you know, I think he got disqualified from race one, I believe, um, for a little tag. Uh, but so he started at the back for race two, but climbed his way up. It was just unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. Very, as I say, very vivid um, in my mind. And how crazy, 25 years on, he gets announced today alongside Zach Bates as the, you know, running the wild card for Triple Eight and uh, and Super Cheap Auto next year. I reckon that's that's awesome that he's still going around. And uh, he might have a couple of uh, couple of grey hairs now and only running as a, uh, as a wild card driver, guys. But perfect person for a young Zach Bates to be to be paired with for the big endurance races next year. Absolutely. Yeah, and everyone everyone seems to do really good after they're with Craig Craig Lowndes for the endurance. What a, so. what a what a mentor, right, Alex? I mean exactly. he, he he channels everything that Brock did so well, that that kind of natural flair. I mean he's still, you know, at, at fifty, um not really showing any signs of, you know, kind no. of slowing down, <laughs> yeah. but, but yet, yeah, right. It's still, you know, even with Declan and, and so on, is not afraid to stand up and go, no, hang on a minute. No, he can, he can do qualifying or, or whatever. Yeah. Right. So the mentoring thing was very powerful for him when, when he came through the impact that it had, what Brock kindly did for him in taking him and others under, under his wing. And Craig's never forgotten that. Right. And, and, is in a phase of life and a phase of of, um, of competition where he enjoys the thought of, of giving back like that. And, to you know, it's a very selfish game sport, right? You, you have to have a level of um, grunt in what you do that uh, you don't settle for second best. You'll make some difficult choices. You'll make people bristle sometimes, right? That's just the the nature of it. I mean, he could very easily be... be clinging on going i'm i'm the dude and you're just the the young whippersnapper coming along for the ride but in fact he's not he's doing the complete no. opposite and and um supporting them in their learnings in every possible way and make no mistake too i mean triple eight um sit back and see how well those those youngsters those rookies um dive into the opportunity i mean you know when you look back over most of them that have come through in recent years they acutely observe how much time they spend at Triple Eight, the the time away from the track where they're understanding, learning the team, learning the car, how it operates, so that when they do get to the, you know, the Ben Five Hundred and 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 Bathurst next year, um, you you're playing at the big dance, right? But you you're not coming in completely cold, and it's the way that you apply yourself uh, off track that is um, assessed in some respects just as much as what you what you bring to the table when it comes time for those enduros. Absolutely. And and we've shown that with Cooper Murray, now locked in for Erebus next year full-time. Fantastic. Yeah. Absolutely deserved. Yeah. Now, before we wrap this up, we've got probably one of the most important questions anyone can ask in life. Alex, would you like to fire away? <laughs> Oh, it's the complete opposite of that. Um, well, Greg, you're our first interviewee on LTM, so thank you for joining us uh, on, on, on the show. Um, but as the first guest, you have the most important uh, question to answer, which is, um, what is your favourite and go-to emoji that you use all the time when you oh. text people? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, firstly, thank you for picking up my limited grey matter there too and correcting me on De <laughs> De Declan slash Cooper Murray. Well done, because I was going through the uh, the brain bank, the archives. The uh, pro That's probably right. probably the um the thing I often go to nowadays is the uh the, the kind of hands together the peace the yeah. peace thing, right? <laughs> so like it's a it's a thank you if I screw up with a memory like that, right? Or um <laughs> uh, I reckon I reckon if I open my phone here now as I talk to you guys, it would be uh at the top, if not the most recent kind of one that I've that I've used. Um yep. I tend I tend to use some crazy ones with the kids i have teenage daughters so they're, they're driving now and things like that they're teaching you know silly old dad new things. Lo lo lots about lots about <laughs> life right um but i uh, you know I, I have moments where i'll express a view on something I, I tend to try and be be switzerland i'm a huge believer that people can share their viewpoint on on something and providing we're not um you know, uh, uh, aggressive towards one another. My view mightn't have to be the same as yours, um, mm. Alex. You know, but I can sit and appreciate what you've um, 
you know, what you've had to say and, and your take on what the future might be or whatever it is for supercars might be different to mine. But at the end yeah. of it, it's just like, hey, mate, thanks, great chat. Yeah. And, and, you know, good thanks. on you for having having that, that viewpoint. Yeah, I'm far from religious, by the way. That's not not, <laughs> not, not the case at all. But but I, um, I'm generally a pretty peaceful person. So, yeah, that's where it comes yeah, from, well, I guess. That's- I think in the media, everyone has their own opinion. So no, that, that makes a very, very good point. So um, yeah, thanks for that. And um, yeah, Pleasure. thank you for being on that show. Really, really appreciate it. Pleasure, boys. And keep keep batting and boxing with um, with what you're doing. You know, there's lots of lots of different pods and, um, you know, programs on YouTube and whatever else where people um, love their motor racing. And as long as it, you know, kind of comes from the heart and a couple of mates having a, having a crack and talking about what they love and, you know, more or less replicating what, those of us would do when the racing, you know, finishes. So hopefully uh, on Sunday evening when the Bathurst International all wraps up, we'll have a quiet couple of little lemonades and a laugh about the year that was and, and um, a little bit like we're doing here on this podcast. So keep going well with it. Thank you. And that's how it should be. Um, just two yeah. couple of blokes having fun, chatting all things motorsport. That's our slogan. But no, exactly. thank, thanks for joining us, mate. Really appreciate it. Uh, it's a true honour to have you on and uh, all the best for the rest of the year. Thank you so much for having me on. All the best. Cheers. Bye. Thanks, Greg. Oh, 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 oh,